Hello and welcome back to Cemetery Scout. Got a few stories today to tell you about the Bezalel Payne lot. Let's get moving. All right, so check this out. Here's a state highway, right? No sign indicating there's a cemetery here at all. No parking lot or anything. So I had to park a half mile away and walk down to the cemetery and spy it just kind of tucked away in the side of the woods here. First up, we got the namesake of this cemetery, Bezalel Payne, along with his wife, Martha. Now, I couldn't find any real info about Bezalel, but I did find a reference to a Bezalel Payne presiding over the marriage of a couple in 1806 here in Rhode Island. I can't be sure if it's the same guy, but unless they had two Bezalel Paynes running around marrying people in 1806 around these parts in Burrowville, I think we got our man. So Bezalel, nice job marrying those people. Bet you did a great job. Now, next up, we got the son of Martha and Bezalel, Junia Payne. Uh, the only thing I could turn up about Junia is that in 1818, he signed a petition to charter the creation of the Burrowville and Gloucester Washington United Calvary. So uh, nice job exercising your rights, man. I'm proud of you. Now, skipping forward a generation, right here we have Martha Wilcox, Bezalel and Martha Payne's granddaughter, and her husband, Moses Wilcox. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything specific on Martha. I found a few references to a Martha Wilcox that worked as a school teacher in Burrowville at around the right time, but I think she still would have been Martha Payne during the year that the report I found was written, so not super confident it's the same woman. Moses, though, has a bit more of a written history. Like, for one, I found out he was the town florist in Burrowville, and for two, I actually found a report in the Boston Herald, an article from 1888 detailing a fishing trip to Quebec that Moses took with the sitting mayor of Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, more than anything, this is the kind of little anecdote that I just love talking about on this show. I guess the trip went okay, although a bit rough around the edges. The article makes constant references to how bad the biting flies were attacking everyone. The funniest detail included in the whole article though is the description of a meal that the group ate at a farmhouse on route up to Quebec. Uh, the exact words used in the article are that the meal consisted of very vile pork and bread black as the ace of spades. All right, so for this last grave here, let's go back a generation again to Martha and Bezalel Payne's direct children. Here we have Duty Payne. Got a pretty interesting story to tell you about him. So when I was researching Duty, I found the diary of a young preacher named John Colby, who traveled all of New England spreading the teachings of the Free Will Baptist Church. In this book, he mentions time spent preaching right here in Burrowville, Rhode Island, way back in October of 1812. Now on one of these days spent preaching in particular, he felt a uniquely strong connection to his faith, stating, I felt my soul more than usual drawn out to God. However, despite this strong connection, the long days of travel had begun to wear on John Kobe, and so he cast his body down in front of his audience of Burrowville's populace and prayed to his Lord. O oh Lord, I am here in a strange land, far from all my relations and natural friends. My labor since I came into this place has exceeded my strength, and I am now reduced to a very low state of health. I cannot continue but a little while, unless something favorable should take place for the recovery of my health. And now, Lord, I come to thee and ask this one favor, this one petition at thy hand, that thou wilt convert a number of these young men who may serve as bearers to carry my body to the grave if I should die in this country. Now, upon hearing this plea, Four of Burrowville's young men leapt forward to answer John Kobe's call and be baptized as pallbearers. Among them, right here, Duty Payne. Now as John Kobe watched, Duty and the others march out into the water, two by two as if carrying a casket already, he remarked to himself, Oh, may my soul be ripening for glory 
as fast as my body ripens for the grave. Duty, that was very noble of you to step up like that. I won't forget it. And I hope you won't forget it either. I'll see you next time.